So you're thinking about moving to Denver and you've heard a ton of good things about it, but you're just kind of curious if it's really going to live up to the hype. Well, in this video, I'm going to break it down for you guys, because honestly, most of our clients don't move to Denver. And I'm going to go over the top reasons why in this video, and a couple of them might be surprising to you. And then if you guys stay around to the end of this video, I'm going to tell you the top three cities our clients do end up moving to. So let's get right into it. All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. I am in the office today. Will is out in the field with you guys out on showings. We saw a drop in interest rates this week and immediately our buyer activity just like skyrocketed. So it's been a little bit crazy lately, but I am excited to do this video for you guys because it's gonna be a good, honest video and it is really nothing but the truth. The majority of our clients that we have reach out, out to us from this channel do not end up moving to the city of Denver. Now, yes, we call our channel living in Denver, but that's honestly because in Colorado, if you live really within a 45 minute radius of Denver in any of the surrounding cities, if you're talking to anyone from outside the state, you pretty much just say you live in Denver or you're from Denver. All right. Now that doesn't mean that we have everybody moving and trying to get right into the city of Denver. And I'm not even talking about just downtown. I'm talking about all of the surrounding Denver neighborhoods. Now, don't get me wrong. It is still an extremely popular area. Homes there still do very, very well. Honestly, that is part of the reason that a lot of people end up not going to Denver because you're going to have a lot of homes there that are historic, right? They were built in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, up into the 60s and 70s as well. But you're gonna have a lot of Denver homes that were built right around that 1950 timeline. And really what that means is you got an older house. And when people are coming here from another state, a lot of times they're coming from suburban areas and they're coming to Colorado because they wanna be closer to nature. They wanna have more outdoor space. They wanna have open space field in their backyard. They want to be able to have good mountain views. And if you're going down into the city of Denver, you're really just not going to have that. Now we have had some clients come here from New York, Chicago, some other like, you know, more metropolitan areas. They love the historic charm of Denver homes. A ton of people do. A lot of locals do it. Like I said, it is a very popular area. You go to Wash Park, it's extremely popular. You go to University Park, you go to any of these popular areas, the Highlands, they're always going to be crowded with people. A lot of people live there. Okay. So when I'm going through this video, I don't want you to think that no one wants to live in the city of Denver, but honestly, a lot of the clients that are moving here from another state, they're choosing not to. So my first point really is just the size of the yards and the style of the homes that you're going to have here. If you're comparing a $700,000 home in Denver to a $700,000 new build home in Parker or Castle Rock or Littleton or Highlands Ranch, a lot of people that are coming here like, man, I'll, I'll take the new home where I have some mountain views. I have some open space. Space. I have a bigger backyard. You know, it is just a very specific type of buyer that is like, hey, I want to go to the city of Denver and kind of have that kind of city life a little bit and have an older home and a smaller lot. However, if that is what you're looking for and you just love the Denver vibe, because I got to tell you, Denver does not feel like your traditional big metropolitan city. I mentioned before, it's got this historic charm. It's very, very true. A lot of the neighborhoods down there have really cool strips where there's antique stores and cool coffee shops and bookstores and restaurants, really good restaurants down there and, and cool neighborhood bars. So there's so much to be desired about these Denver neighborhoods. But if that's not what you're looking for and you're looking for just a little bit more of the uh, you know traditional suburban life where you can still drive to downtown Denver for a date night or something, some of the surrounding suburban areas might be for you. All right, now before we move on to the next point, guys, I've got to remind you that we are licensed real estate brokers and there is a phone number popping up on the screen right now. So give us a phone call text message or email, and we would love to help you with any of your real estate needs. So with that being said, let's get right to the next point. Now that brings me to my point number two, and that really is just a more quiet lifestyle. All right. Now, if you are living in Denver, we don't have terrible traffic in Denver. You know, when we're helping clients move here from other big cities, real big cities where they have real traffic, they say our traffic is a joke, right? Some of the locals might not say that because of course it's changed over the past 50 years or whatever. But a lot of the people that are coming here like, man, your, your traffic is just not that bad. So even though our traffic isn't that bad, if you're living in Denver, in these surrounding areas, there is just more activity overall. It is a little bit faster pace. There's more pedestrians, there's more bikes, there's more cars, there's smaller streets. So if you are looking for something just a little more quaint, which again, a lot of people that are coming to Colorado, they want the Colorado feel, they want mountain views, they want open space. That doesn't really coincide with hustle and bustle and city life. So 
In addition to the types of homes and just more space in your yard, it also is just having a more just quiet atmosphere. You know, Colorado is so big on our indoor outdoor living. Like a lot of the homes that we'll feature on this channel and stuff, they've got the, you know huge opening side outdoors so that on the nice weekends and everything, you can go outside and you're sitting on your porch, watching the sunset, having a glass of wine. Kids are inside playing, you're cooking food in the kitchen and you're just kind of going in and outside at your will. And it's part of the whole Colorado thing, especially because year round, it can get pretty warm on winter days, right? Yes, it gets cold at night, but it can get pretty warm on winter days. Just today, you know, we're middle of December, almost Christmas time now, and we had our windows open throughout the house and the sun was coming in and it was, it was pretty warm. That's not uncommon at all. If you're living in the city, you're gonna have a hard time doing that or it might just be a little more noisy for you. All right, now let's talk cost of living. You are going to have a significantly lower cost of living if you are living in these surrounding suburban areas or surrounding cities in the Denver metro area than if you are living in the city of Denver. Now, just for example, if you were to take a look at a $700,000 house in Denver and then a $700,000 house in, let's say, new build community in Castle Rock, there's going to be a vast difference. Now, of course, you're living in Denver on the other one, right? So if that's very important to you, that might be more than worth the money to do that. Chances are the home is going to be older at 700,000, depending on the neighborhood. If it's $700,000 home in Wash Park, it's probably going to need some work. It's probably going to need some updates. If it's a $700,000 home in Castle Rock, it might be brand new. Now, as far as other everyday living expenses, there might be a slight difference if you're living outside the city, but not anything, you know, that is really going to be that big of a difference. The primary difference is going to be really in the housing. It is significant though. So it definitely is something worth taking a look at. So if you are looking for something more newer, more modern, and in a good price bracket for you, the surrounding cities might be the way to go. If you are looking for the classic Denver historic charm, and you just, you really like that vibe that comes with those, and it is a cool vibe. I love a lot of those houses. I love going on showings with those. I love doing showings on those older Denver homes. Some of them are absolutely gorgeous. So if that is your style, man, there are some amazing options for you. All right, now you've heard me mention a couple of times already, but that is going to be access to nature. Again, almost 100% of you guys that call in when we're on a Zoom call and I'm asking, you know, what's bringing you guys to Denver? A lot of times, yes, it's a job, but most of the time, hey, Colorado is beautiful. We visited some friends out there. We couldn't stop thinking about it. We love skiing. We love hiking. We love biking. We can't do that where we are currently. And man, we want to come to Colorado to experience that. And if you are living in some of these surrounding cities, a lot of them have those sort of amenities in the immediate neighborhood, especially if you're down in like Castle Rock or Castle Pines, you can go out your backyard. Chances are there's a trail within a quarter mile of you and you can take your mountain bike out there. You can go on a walk. Chances are you've got some amazing views in your area and nature is just literally right there for you. I showed on a video we did recently on this neighborhood in Highlands Ranch called Bat Country. And on the back side of that neighborhood, it is just all mountain bike trails. You don't even have to go anywhere for that. If you live in Denver, you're going to have to go somewhere for that. Now, the plus side is that you live further north, so you're pretty close to I-70. I-70 goes right through Denver. So if you do want to go into just the straight up mountains for those sort of things, you are closer to I-70 and you can just head out west. However, if you're looking to experience that stuff on just a more regular basis, getting outside of Denver is definitely going to be the way to go for you. All right, now let's talk parking. This is probably one of the biggest differences and it is so frustrating to go in downtown. So a lot of the homes down there, they usually have at least a one car garage, maybe a two car garage. A lot of times they're detached from the home. So there's a very good chance that you might have to, if you're living in the city of Denver, pull into your driveway, park in your detached garage. It kind of sits behind the house a little bit. And then even in the snow or bad weather or rain, you kind of got to walk outside the garage, shut the garage and walk into your back door and do that whole thing, right? If you don't have a garage, you're going to be parking on the street and those streets get full. They're going to be empty during the day while everyone's at work, but come five, six o'clock at night, it can be so hard to find a parking spot. And I remember when I lived downtown, I did not have a garage and I had to battle with street parking every night. And if I got home after 10 some nights, I would legitimately have to walk three to four blocks with all my stuff just to get to my house. And then that means in the morning, you're walking three to four blocks to go back to your car. And that got old real fast. Now, like I said, a lot of the homes down there, most of the homes down there will have a garage. You might not have 
have to battle with street parking very often. However, your guests might have to, right? It, it is definitely a thing. It's also a thing on the weekend where we were down at Wash Park earlier this summer doing a video down there and it was, I believe, a Saturday. And man, those streets were full. You happen to live on one of those streets. I mean, I, I could see how it'd be frustrating pulling into your garage, even just having the room to kind of navigate those streets. Some people, they love it. Some people, they live down in Wash Park and they hardly ever drive their car and they just, you know, kind of walk everywhere. That's very common. So again, if that's for you, amazing. But if you are coming to Colorado and you've got your RV, you've got your big old truck, you've got four cars, definitely, definitely, definitely keep that in mind. What I always say in my videos, you guys have heard me say this before, when you go in these surrounding suburban areas, it's always nice to be able to find that three car garage if possible, because even if you just have a few toys in there or a snowblower or some bikes or lawnmower, a three car garage can easily turn into a two car and a two car garage easily turns into a one car just after you're throwing a couple little things in there. If you have a shed in the backyard or something, those are very common, that can help a ton. But if you're coming out here, you want easy access to your car, you want easy parking and just not have to deal with, you know, just hustle and bustle and trying to find a spot and all that, downtown would not be a place for you, all right? Or the city of Denver, you're gonna wanna stay on the outside suburban areas. Now, this is something guys that, you know, when we jump on these Zoom calls with you, this is what we discuss. You know, if we're talking about, hey, we really like Denver and we're looking to live in this sort of neighborhood, like the Highlands, Sloan's Lake, anything like that, I'm diving into, okay, cool. Hey, what is it about the Highlands that draws you to it? And then people are like, hey, I like the hustle and bustle. I love the restaurants down there. I love the bars down there. I love that it's a little bit younger. I love the dog parks. Phenomenal. Hey, let's look at Highlands. Let's look at Sloan's Lake. Let's look at this place and this place. Hey, and we're going after it, right? But if I'm like, hey, what is it that you love about the Highlands? And then you say, oh, well, man, I'm, I'm really looking for a big yard and that seems like a place where they might have big yards. And I'm really looking for some place that's, you know, just outside the city and it's really quiet. And it's like, yeah, technically Highlands is right outside the city, but it's not necessarily quiet. Like, it's not crazy, but it's not necessarily quiet either. You're gonna have the same street parking issues. So these are the conversations that we'll have on these. And then, hey, let's go look at the Highlands and see it and feel it and see if it's right for you. But then if I could throw a couple other places into the hat that you know we, we could go explore while you're in town, let's do that as well. So these are all just really good conversations we had, but I wanted to make this video for you guys today because I think it is important just to give you guys some context, you know, with our channel being called Living in Denver, that hey, yep, we do cover Denver. We help a lot of clients move into Denver, but frankly, the majority decide not to live right in Denver. And here's a few of the reasons why. Now, as promised, let's dive into the top three cities that we find the majority of our clients wanting to move to. So to start off, this probably goes without saying if you've been watching our channel for any amount of time here, but the number one that we see is Castle Rock. Now, it comes as no surprise. I've been saying that Castle Rock is a sleeper city since I got my license seven years ago because for the type of home that you can get there for the money, the amount of nature and trails and activities that you have there, in addition to the just new housing developments and new commercial developments that you have there, like the outlet stores, the Whole Foods, things like that. They're building a Costco down there now, which is great. Everyone's excited for it. It offers so much. Right here, guys, this is the whole city of Castle Rock. And we find that some of the most popular neighborhoods are going to be the Meadows, which you've got right here. This is one of the more established ones, amazing rec centers. You're right by Philip S. Miller Park, which is extremely popular. We've talked about that a bunch on this channel. And then coming down here on the south side, you've got Crystal Valley, but then more specifically, you've got Montaigne, which is one of the newest developments down there. Uh, and they're, they're still building the clubhouse and stuff like that. So you're, you're still waiting a little bit of the infrastructure within Montaigne. But again, just absolutely gorgeous homes and you're close to the highway. So getting to downtown Denver is very, very fast. This has been a very popular area for us. Now let's go ahead and come up north a little bit. We're going to come straight up I-25 here now. We're going to shoot out east here on 470 and we are going to go here to Southeast Aurora. This is the second most popular area that we have our clients uh, wanting to move to. Now South Shore is one of the more popular neighborhoods that you have out here. You've also got Blackstone, you've got Talents Reach, you've got three or four really notable neighborhoods that are within here that are all pretty similar. South Shore by far is the most popular because it butts up to the Aurora Reservoir right here. Now there's no boats allowed on this big old lake 
lake here. They do have a beach, which is really, really cool for residents. And you'll find people going on all these trails all around here. It, and it's massive. It's a really, really big lake, as you guys can see from the drone footage here. And you can go out here on your paddleboard and stuff. So a lot of cool, again, just Colorado activities. And yes, you're a little bit further on the east side of town, but you still have your mountain views. It is the Rocky Mountains. And on top of that, you're much closer to the airport, as you guys can see here. You would just be taking a straight shot north on 470. And here you're at the airport. This is probably a 20 to 23 minute drive. It's very, very fast. Now, the third area that we see that is the most popular for clients is right up here. We're going all the way north, northwest of Denver. And that is going to be really this whole area here, which is Boulder but then it's going to extend even further into Superior, Louisville, and even Lafayette. Now, this is a very popular area because you'll see we've got downtown Denver right here, and then you've got this Highway 36, which will connect you all the way up to Boulder. And this whole drive right here, it is such a beautiful drive, guys. And there's a lot of people coming here that are in tech and maybe their offices are based out of Boulder. Maybe they don't wanna live right in downtown Boulder or the city of Boulder. So a perfect alternative is Superior and Louisville and these three cities that are right here. In addition to Broomfield, we'll, th we'll throw Broomfield in the mix as well. But man, Superior is really hard to beat when you look at just the homes, the views, the nature, the open space. Uh, Superior is very prideful about how much open space that they have around the area and they're very protective of it and it, it pays off because it is absolutely gorgeous when you're there. If you're working in Boulder and you're not too stoked to live in Boulder, man, just go on maybe 15, 20 minutes outside of it. You're going to land in some really, really great suburban areas like this. And then it's beautiful because you're halfway between Denver and Boulder and you still got these amazing views and honestly, really affordable home prices as well. So hopefully this video video was helpful for you guys. I tried not to make it too negative, but also a very, very honest video. So I'm sure this is going to resonate with a lot of you. And again, if you are looking for those city of Denver homes, do not let this be a deterrent to you because we do still help a lot of clients move to Denver. They're looking for that specific thing. Denver has such a good city life feel where it's clean. There's lots of trees. There's a ton of parks. There's a ton of dogs. People are, for the most part, always friendly and welcome welcoming in our city. There is so much good that, you know, living in Denver has to offer for you, but hey, don't feel like you need to live in Denver. Like I said, the majority of people don't. They live in the outside suburban areas. But what's amazing is that, hey, we're 45 minutes from downtown Denver. I think it'd be very different if we were one of those cities where, hey, if you're in the suburbs, you got to drive two hours to get to Denver. It's not the case. If you're living in any of these surrounding areas, you're usually within 30 to 45 minutes max of downtown. So with it being so accessible and with our traffic being as light as it is, you can live down in Castle Rock. And when you want to go to Denver, you're driving the 30 to 40 minutes it's going to take you to get to Denver. You can enjoy Denver for everything it has to offer and then you can head back home and park in your garage right don't have to worry about trying to find a spot to park on the street or anything like that guys you're going to be in good shape and you really get to enjoy the best of both worlds so whether you're looking to live in the city of denver or anywhere in the surrounding suburban areas there's a number popping up on your screen and the best thing you can do is give us a phone call text message or email Let's jump on a Zoom call. Let's have these conversations for you specifically. And we would love to help you with any of your real estate needs. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.